All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of the most requested videos. When does Rahu give good results? When does he give bad results? <laughs> well, we have to understand that Rahu is just like any other planet. What it means when I say just like any other planet? It means if it is linked with certain houses, it gives results of those houses. That's it. End of the story. But the thing is, you have to understand, planetary results always come from two perspectives. The pri there is one primary and then there is one secondary. So primary means, primary holds true for irrespective of any planet. Okay. So that is the houses which it is linked with. And secondary is, what is the natural signification of that planet? Natural significance, I would say. What does it mean? So it means, um, so first is suppose, let's take Jupiter's example. He's sitting in 10th house. So whichever planet is in 10th house in your Bhav chart, not Lagna chart. So Bhav chart queries, unlimited queries. So type Bhav chart, B-H-A-V-A-C-H-A-R-T, exotic astrology. Go to YouTube bar and type, okay? And I won't give the link of the video again and again. It's there. It's pink color thumbnail. You can check, okay? Bhav chart you will find uh, it's there in my channel. So if a planet is there in uh, 10th house of your bhav chart, then whichever planet it is, Jupiter, Rahu, Sun, Moon, Mars, doesn't matter. You will get some kind of uh, appraisal or some promotion or some authority position or some leadership opportunity. And if a planet is in, in the ninth house, you may get some opportunity for higher education or uh, spiritual progress or connection with the Guru. So that is, that is the primary way by which you judge the result of a planet. Okay? Or if a planet is lording the tenth house, then also this can happen. But there is one secondary. Secondary means natural signification. Okay? So in this case, what is the natural signification of Rahu? Rahu's natural signification is he uh, Rahu Ketu also uh, both of them they are they are sudden and they are unpredictable. So suppose you have uh, Jupiter in tenth house and you have Rahu in tenth house. Okay, then what is the difference? What is the difference between having uh, b that you will face during the dasha? Okay, and yeah, one more thing I always keep telling people. Uh, sometimes people say. Oh, my Rahu is in 10th house. You know, why did I never get good things in my career? Well, you must check the Dasha. So, um, ultimately, what your Mahadasha says and Antara Dasha says, that happens in your life. So, life is a result of Maha and Antar. <laughs> Mahadasha, Antara Dasha, that's all. Nothing else. Astrology is very clear and cut with that. Okay. So, it doesn't matter what planets you have, which planets you have where. Ultimately, the dashas of those planets which are running. So, so suppose you are running, uh, you are in 20s, suppose, and you are running Saturn Mahadasha. So then, till the time you will be 40s, uh, your Saturn will run because Saturn is 19 years, right? So you, let's imagine you are exactly 20. Then till 39, your Saturn will run. Then 17 years, Mercury will run. Okay, so. This is how you have to, uh, so then your career, uh, this 30, 35 year span, okay, 36 years almost, this will uh, be covered by two major planets only. So suppose you have five freaking big, large, exalted, debilitated, whatever planets in your 10th house, and none of them are either Saturn or Mercury then uh, you may not uh, you may not reap the results of those uh, those uh, houses this 10th house why because your main mahadasha lords saturn and mercury if suppose they are badly placed one is in 8th and the other is in 12th so then what will happen is uh, your status will not change uh, but you will get keep getting some promotions in um, antar dashas okay so this is how it happens. So coming back to this Rahu Ketu thing, Rahu especially. So if your uh, if your Rahu is in tenth and Jupiter is in tenth, then then how, how how do you differentiate this? Okay. So let's assume your Jupiter is in tenth house, and your Jupiter Mahadasha starts, and your 
overall horoscope is reasonably good, reasonably decent, which means your ascendant lord, sun, moon, and your trinal lords, they are well placed, and your 10th lord is well placed because we are talking of career here, okay? And your majority planets are linked with the nakshatras of the planets which are either sitting or ruling the 2nd, 6th, 10th, and 11th. This is a bit of advanced astrology. It's a bit difficult for you to understand. Many of you have written down in the comments in my uh, nakshatra related videos. It's going too high. So please watch them. Okay, You can go to my home page and you can see uh, the nakshatra videos. So suppose you have a good horoscope. And then you have this Rahu in 10th house, okay? And Rahu Ketu has special rules, which I have made in another video, so you can please watch that. But let's assume Rahu is giving results from the 10th house. So suppose you are working in a company or uh, you, you are having your own business. So then suddenly you may get a phone call uh, from your boss that, hey, we are planning to give you this promotion. Mm -hmm. Or if you are having your own business, self-employment, or you are doing uh, trading and all this, then suddenly somebody may call you and say, we want to uh, give you a platform to, so, so suppose let's take uh, this example, you are in YouTube. So suppose then some very big uh, astral, big channel or any, any, any channel, any platform can call you and say, hey, we are inviting you to this, our channel. And after going there, you become very famous. Okay, I mean, you may be famous already, but uh, then you become more famous. Okay, So this is how you judge actually. But that will be very unexpected, which means you will feel that, oh, I never thought that this will happen to me. But this happened. Okay? But suppose you have Jupiter in the 10th house. And now both the planets, both the planets are giving results of the 10th house. But now Jupiter is a very different planet. Jupiter is a natural benefit. So it will give you connections. It will also give you a promotion. It will also give you an offer. But uh, the person who will uh, give you that uh, appraisal, that kick, I would say, the kick of the 10th house, that person will be, uh, it will be a bit easier to connect with that person. What do I mean by saying easier? Easier means uh, you might speak the same language or you might be from the same country, same, uh, your background may be a bit similar, okay? Your cultural upbringing may be similar, but when it's Rahu, it's totally different. So if you are an Indian, a Westerner might invite you, okay? If you are, um, if you are from a particular religion, some uh, a person from another religion might invite you. If you are from astrology, a numerology person may invite you, okay? Because Rahu, Ketu, and Saturn, these three represent differences. Now, I'm not saying these are good or bad. These are just ways by which you can understand. Because why I'm saying this? Because suppose you have, uh, you have Jupiter and Rahu both in the 10th house. So then you have your, your uh, Rahu Mahadasa starts. Okay? But then after that, your Jupiter Mahadasa will start. right? So then it will be different because the... The, the nature of the planets will give you the kind of people you meet. And the planets which are situated in those houses will give you the results. So the results will not change, but the nature of the people you meet uh, will uh, be different. Okay, And so if Rahu is connected to primarily these houses like the 5th, 9th, 10th or the 11th, then he will give very good results. Or good and bad depends on what you want. So, for example, if your uh, Rahu is in seventh, then, or in second or eleventh, then for marriage, it can give uh, very good results. Second house, seventh house, eleventh house. So, suppose you get married in uh, Rahu Mahadasha or Rahu Antardasha, something like this. So, then after mar after getting married, if you uh, if you want to go to honeymoon, then you will not go to uh, some place which is. Uh, which is like where everybody goes. It, it will be like very much uh, unorthodox, okay? So sometimes uh, like uh, one uh, of my friend, he had got married in Rahu Mahadasha recently. So uh, he's from India, Assam. So uh, I asked him, so where did you, uh, where, why, where do you want to go uh, to honeymoon with your wife? So he said, I want to explore all the areas within Assam. I was like, wow. <laughs> So now if, because generally in Assam, uh, or sorry, not Assam, generally in India, there is this uh, 
fancy thing that, oh, honeymoon means we must have it in Paris or in Berlin or in London or in Chicago, some other place like that. Now, although these places, uh, they, they are actually Rahu because they are distant from the uh, Vedic culture. Okay? They are like Rahu. But in Kali Yuga, Rahu has become like uh, this, Rahu behaves like a benefit. So that means nowadays the trend is that every Indian they uh, they uh, they ask me after before getting married they say oh sir okay can we go go to honeymoon uh, can we go uh, for uh, honeymoon to Paris or to London to you know Berlin to these places but now because this person was having Rahu so this person said I don't want to go out I want to stay here but. That's very unconventional. I mean, you will rarely find people uh, telling that, oh, where will you go for honeymoon? Oh, actually, I will explore my state. You, you will rarely find this. It's very, very, very rare. But because it was Rahu, so this happened. So this Rahu's things, you have to uh, analyze as per Desh Kalpatra, time, place, circumstances. So... In the current time, so if you go 50, 100 years back, it was considered not very good to leave one's country and go abroad or do anything like this in any country, not only India. But nowadays, uh, that, that is like uh, one of the trends that uh, people, they don't consider, uh, they consider that you are very successful if you go abroad, like USA or uh, Europe or some other place. Uh, so now, if somebody has influence of Rahu, it can happen that the person says, no, no, I don't want to go to uh, Google headquarters in USA and work. I want to open a startup in India. This can happen. Now you may think, oh, but Rahu should take you to foreign lands, right? Well, that's the trick because you have to interpret it as, as per your Deshkal Patra, what is good and bad. And also, you have to check the family upbringing, the cultural upbringing of the person. What kind of values does the person, uh, has the person been given from his parents, by his parents? That's very important. If a person is born uh, in, a, in any, any place, but that, that person is born in a very strict religious uh, tradition, a lot of rituals and a lot of, uh, you know, family traditional culture is passed on. So for that person if rahu gets activated that person may not stay there that person may go to a different state a person from gujarat may go to tamil nadu a person from uh, manipur may come to kerala okay or a person from andhra pradesh may uh, go to himachal pradesh these kind of things can be there because for that person because um, the jupiterian influence is very strong so then Rahu can actually behave as, as the Rahu which uh, is written in the uh, books of astrology. Rahu is unorthodox, different culture, out of caste, creed and all this. Okay, But suppose a person is born in a metro city like, uh, you know, like Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, Chennai, especially Delhi, Mumbai, I would say. Or can be Bangalore also these days. So then if the person is born in an ultra so-called modern family where every time from the morning they are born, uh, from the day they are born, they're always uh, hearing, oh, my cousin has gone to US, my uh, cousin sister is in Canada, my cousin brother is in Norway, well, these things they're hearing. So for them, uh, go going to the West, it may not be a big deal because most of their family members may be in the West. So now if their Rahu gets activated, they may say, no, I'm not going here anywhere. I'll sit in my home and I will do everything here. So then this 10th house effect will be in a different manner. And still Rahu is acting. Why? Because then all of his family members and friends and cousins, relatives, they will keep telling him, oh, this guy is very different. This girl is different. All of his cousins... Uh, and relatives are in US, in Canada, but this person is in town. All right, so, but now suppose he was in a traditional family, then he would say, oh, everybody is here, why are you going outside? So, this is how you can know. So, just because a person is born in 21st century doesn't mean that Rahu uh, is not behaving like Rahu. It also depends on the family background and culture, okay? And on the place where the person is staying. So, if 
Yeah, so if a person is staying in a place where uh, he or she has been seeing a lot of uh, meat eating and uh, drinking wine and all this, so then if Rahu is in the ninth house, Rahu is linked with the ninth house, then the person may suddenly say, oh, I will not take alcohol anymore. Okay, so because then that becomes a bit unorthodox, okay. But in general, Rahu represents all these things, okay, wine, alcohol, and all this. So the thing is, uh, where Rahu is placed, the houses and the cultural upbringing, okay, and the place where the person is born or the status of the family or the values, as I said, culture and the values also, okay, and the kind of friends and associates that he has had during his childhood, these things matter very much. So whenever you are giving a prediction about Rahu and Ketu to the client, so suppose Rahu or Ketu Mahadasha is going to start, then you must you must take into consideration Desh Kal Patra. You must, 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 must. Okay. Without that, you should never make a prediction. Which means, suppose somebody's Rahu is in 7th house. And you tell them, oh, okay, you will get married to somebody from a different religion. But uh, if in that person's family, uh, uh, like uh, inter-religion marriages are very common. So then the Rahu may act in a different way. He might have, have an arranged marriage within the same religion, same community. So then Rahu acts in a different way because for him that is Rahu. All right. So therefore uh, we need to be uh, cognizant of the person's family traditions, upbringing, and also what kind of friends uh, he or she has associated with, what kind of books does the person read. So you should get an overall idea. Without that, you should not uh, just blindly make a prediction. Oh, you, you, are, uh, you are from Andhra Pradesh. You will marry somebody who is from Gujarat or you will marry somebody from uh, you know, Tamil Nadu. You, sh you should not say like this. That might be true for 50% of the cases. But in many of the cases, you will run... Uh, your predictions will be wrong actually, all right? And then the person will wonder, oh, this person said this will happen, but this happened. Oh, actually, you know. Now you see, all astrologers are fake. Astrology is a fake nuisance. It's a bloody useless science. It doesn't work. So astrology was, it is, and it will always be a bona fide science. There's no doubt. But the problem is we are not interpreting it rightly. So it is our problem. It is not Parashar Muni's problem. Mm -hmm. We have to know how to interpret Jyotish and especially Rahu Ketu because Rahu Ketu represents uh, the changing barriers within society. Okay, and if Rahu is linked to the ninth house, then it becomes very precarious because then what what happens? The person will the person follow the tr traditional stuff or the person will. Uh, change his or her religion and take uh, inspiration from another religion. Well, there the time, place, circumstances come into play. Okay, so, so, so suppose if a person, let's take an example, if a person is born in Banaras and the person is born in a very traditional Hindu family and the person has a very strong Rahu in the ninth house, okay. So then the person may, uh, if, the, if that Rahu is somehow linked to the twelfth house also, then that person may go abroad and then change his or her religion or be inspired by some other religion like Christianity or Islam or whatever. And so then that becomes like a Rahu thing, like breaking the tradition. But if the person is born in like in a you know, ultra modern family where hardly there is any uh, spiritual or religious knowledge given as in most of the families, even in India these days, unfortunately. So then it may happen that... Uh, a person who is born in a Hindu family goes uh, goes to US and then does some yoga there. Yoga or meditation or starts learning Bhagavad Gita. It ha has happened with many Indians who has gone to U who have gone to US. So then now Rahu's ninth house got activated by going there. But that's again bit like Rahu. It's in a foreign country, right? So so you you have to know the Deshkal Patra to to come to this conclusion that this. Uh, Rahu's presence in ninth house is going to give them a different religion or the same religion in a different country. Okay, Or maybe the Guru is a foreigner. Guru is a Westerner. The Westerner is teaching yoga and all this. All right. So that is how you judge whether Rahu will be good or bad or whatever. Even if Rahu is linked with the Dustanas, then Rahu can give difficult uh, challenges. But 
what will be the nature so you have to check the entire chart then you have to check uh, these desh uh, kal patra time place circumstances all right so without that you should never 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 ever 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 make a prediction especially for rahu ketu all right so if you want to watch other videos on rahu ketu i'll put it here all right thank you very much for your patience and if you're new to the channel then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation from me then please go to my website below and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who is interested to know when does rahu give good or bad results all right thank you very much